welcome to Artwork Winona for October. I am so excited. We have a jam-packed show for you. First up, we have Roger Boulay um, from Winona State's Art and Design Department talking about a special event that's at the beginning of the month and then another opening at his Watkins Gallery. And then we have John Swanson from the Minnesota Marine Art Museum. So the first half of the show, we're talking some fine art, and then we get into some interesting territory with Grace Watkins stopping by, back from beyond, the Cemetery Walk performer Kathy Schuler doing a little bit of the Cemetery Walk, and then we'll be talking with her about that great Winona tradition, the Cemetery Walk Voices from the Past. Then we have a new wonderful business and event, the Auditorium and the Halla Winona event, created by uh, Cindy uh, um, Noft and her brother Brian, and Dr. Bob the Puppeteer. Dr. Bob the Puppeteer will be performing with Captain Arg for us for a little bit. And then finally the show will end with Teresa Remick from the Page Theater. That's an incredible half hour for you here on Artwork Winona for October. First a word. Be sure to check out US Golf TV where you are gonna see golf products that you have never seen before. You're also gonna see golf tips from some of the leading instructors around the country that are truly changing the way people are teaching the game and challenging the status quo. Also, you're gonna see fitness tips that are revolutionizing the way PGA Tour pros are training their body and swinging the golf club. If you want something different, if you're looking for some new information, US Golf TV has it. Be sure to check your local listings. US Golf TV, we've got you covered. And first on Artwork Winona for October is Roger Boulay, who works at Winona State University School of Art and Design, and will be um, heading up an effort to have a Laird Norton Center for Art and Design downtown as part of our downtown arts district. Roger, tell us a little something about this Laird Norton project. So Winonans might know the uh, former UBC headquarters uh, was home to the Laird Norton family for many years and the company, the Laird Norton company, uh, donated the building to Winona State in 2015 and we are uh, currently undergoing a fundraising campaign to uh, be able to renovate the facility into a creative and innovative center. There'll be galleries, uh, there'll be uh, places for community members as well as students to make things to get and their to hands. And house the collection, right? The it's, Watkins collection. It'll house the Watkins collection and house several other important art collections that are um, at the university. And it's just going to be a really dynamic and thriving uh, resource for our community and our students. With a grand staircase and lobby area that is going to be home for the event that you want to talk about. That's so. right, yeah, the building was constructed in 1917 and the atrium is beautiful if you haven't seen it before. Uh, it's on the corner of 5th and Johnson Streets, right across Johnson Street from the public library. Mm -hmm. And we are uh, holding a fundraising event on October 5th. We're calling it the Laird Norton Gala. Uh, so bring your you know, business casual, semi-formal wear, get that out. Come on over on the 5th from 6 to 8 p.m. We're going to have a silent auction. Uh, there'll be other displays of student projects and student works, like a virtual reality game that visitors can engage with. Uh, and it's really going to be a great time. And please consider, you know, even a few dollars will help us in our efforts to renovate this, this future building. Well, I think building. to be able to dust off your gala attire in Winona is always a great thing and for such a great cause. And I know you also run the Watkins Gallery, right, as part of your work, and you're curating a show that's going to be happening in October? That's correct. So we have an opening. It's actually on a Monday. Uh, and the reason we're holding it on a Monday is that's also Indigenous Peoples Day oh, at Winona yeah. State, mm -hmm. which is going to be very cool. There's a lot of events going on. And one of them is a gallery opening. We have three Native American artists who are part of a show curated by one of our senior art majors. Uh, that'll be happening in the Watkins Gallery. And if you haven't been to the Watkins Gallery before, um, if you know where 9th Street is and you know where Mugby Junction is, if you head into campus, it's two buildings in from 9th Street, right on your left there. We'll have a banner outside the building, come on over, we'll have hors d'oeuvres, coffee, and check out this work from Native American artists uh, from all over the country. What's that date again? Uh, October 8th. 
But the and, and that's the opening night celebration. But the show is available at other times. You can just stop by the gallery and ask to see it if it isn't open. Are there open hours for the gallery? Correct. Yeah, the, the gallery is open from 9 to 4 daily, and we're open until 8 p.m. on Wednesday nights. Uh, in this particular show, which is entitled They Will Show You, Two Spirit Artists, uh, will be on view from September 24th through October 16th. So you've got a pretty busy month of October coming up. One more time for the gala. The gala the is, is Friday, October 5th. Mm -hmm. And then the opening reception for the uh, Native American art show in the Watkins Gallery is uh, October 8th. Okay. And, and the um, gala time again? The gala time is uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. Okay. And then the, the reception at the Watkins Gallery on campus is from uh, 6 to 7 p.m. So tell us just in a nutshell, the purpose of the... Uh, Laird Norton Center of Art and, Desi Art and Design, did I say it right? Correct. Um, is really to, to um, first to give the students a great new state-of-the-art facility, also to house the art collections that are um, precious and really need to be shared just that much more with the community, but also to give the community a place, another place for meetings and creative um, uh, sort of fine art um, gallery space and things in the off times, right? when the students aren't using it, the community would be able to. That's all correct, yeah. So we're really hoping to bring together community, education, our students, and industry in this space. And I just would love for um, those that are watching the show to envision our landmark library, which is truly the oldest um, extant library in Minnesota that was built as a library and still running as a library. This beautiful Laird Norton space right next door and then the renovated Masonic Theater into a performing arts center to have sort of those three musketeers right there um, sort of um, just showing what the arts and culture can do for a community. So this is a really important project and it really needs to be um, given your full attention. So thanks for tuning in, Roger, and coming by uh, to talk about this. Thanks very much for having me. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. Now's the time to unleash the internet. With HPC, you can get internet speeds up to one gig. It's the speeds you need for the ultimate internet experience. Connect all of your devices, including tablets, game consoles, smartphones, computers, smart speakers, and more. Upload and share photos and videos instantly. Stream HD movies in a flash. And experience online gaming like never before. Call HPC today at 888-474-9995 to get started. It's always a pleasure when our next guest stops by. John Swanson, Curator of Collections and Exhibitions at the Minnesota Marine Art Museum. Yes, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, that's you. a mouthful, but we got it. Um, and he's here to talk about the next exhibit, the ongoing work that he does for the museum. Tell us what's up in October. We have a very special exhibition of new work by Minnesota wildlife and landscape photographer Craig Blacklock. Mm -hmm. This project, both of a book and exhibition, is titled The Enduring Gift, and he's exploring the St. Croix River and the Namakagan River, uh, looking at 230 miles of different wildlife, different flora and fauna along its lengths, and celebrating what started 50 years ago as a preservation project and developed into a, uh, what is now a national park. Wow. And so he's a photographer of uh, sort of international or national importance? Well, very much known in Minnesota. He comes from a legacy. His father, Les Blacklock, was a very important wildlife mm -hmm. photographer as well. Uh, Craig has been a professional photographer his entire life. His wow. main focus and subject has been Minnesota and primarily Lake Superior. How did you stumble upon this work? Well, I'm from Duluth, Minnesota originally, and mm -hmm. I was a fan of his book when uh, my parents had it on our coffee table when I was growing up. And I... I is this the so book? This is the new book. Okay. But uh, he has done several, several books just on Lake Superior, and then he's expanded beyond Lake Superior to do other areas in Minnesota. Now, this is an area uh, that is familiar to him, where his father traveled, where he grew up fishing and paddling, but he never really approached it photographically until two years ago. Wow, so he's going back to his roots, so to speak, right? He is. Well, he lives in Moose Lake. He has since 1976, and he's really at the upper end of the watershed that winds both of these two rivers through the St. Croix River Valley down into the Mississippi River at uh, Hastings and Prescott. 
And so, um, does the is it open now or is it opening in in October? It opens uh, October twenty sixth. Mm -hmm. It'll have thirty five large scale photographs, and this exhibition is one of I think three venues that are featuring this. And I've been working closely with Craig for the last couple of years in order to make this happen. Here. So it'll travel, or they're it'll, all it'll, sharing. We're all sharing, but what, what will be at the Minnesota Marine Art Museum won't all necessarily be at the other venue. So it'll be a different show wow. than what was So elsewhere. it's almost like building three separate shows, but in conjunction with each other. We're very fortunate to have a large enough gallery uh -huh. to host you know, more of these large-scale photographs, so he's printing up some, oh. some fresh ones for so we're us. So there will be things you'll be able to see here that you won't be able to see in Correct. any other space. Correct, yeah. Well, thanks so much for bringing it. You always bring such amazing work to our, our community. We're so lucky to have you. And it's Duluth's loss, what can we say? <laughs> but you do end up sharing quite a lot of uh, artistry with Duluth. Too. We do. Um, you know, obviously, us as a marine art museum celebrating great art inspired by water, we cannot overlook one of the greatest lakes, mm -hmm. which is Lake Superior in our home state. Great. Well, thanks for coming by. You're I know that welcome. as we talked, the, um, the um, viewing audience got to see a little bit of the work. So I'm sure that'll be enough to get you excited. And yeah. you did bring just a little bit of a, this a is, taste of, of the kind of work you'll be able to see. Yeah, this is his new book. Uh, there are well over 100 images in the book project, but we will have 35 of them on display at the Minnesota Marine Art Museum. And I'm sure you'll have some beautiful prints, if not the book also. And we'll have a video, purchase. and the book uh -huh. will be uh, available to page through, and we'll have stuff for sale as well. Great. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by, John. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Okay. Sledhead 24-7. If it happens on the snow, find it here first. Snowmobile destinations, sled evaluations, lifestyles, aftermarket and product reviews, highlighting all aspects of racing, and get the inside coverage on the Amsoil Championship Snowcross. Sledhead 24-7, where we are everything snowmobile. folks don't be afraid of my gun why I hunt big game like elephants and lions small potatoes like you <laughs> no way also I'll have you know I am a crackerjack shot my father paid for the best trap shooter of all time Annie Oakley to train me I should back up a little bit tell you who I am I am Grace Watkins King I was born in Plainview, 1877, and my parents were Mary Eleanor and Joseph Ray, J.R. Watkins. Next up is Kathy Schuler, a volunteer with the Winona Historical Society, who has been helping make this event happen for how many seasons now? Mm, I, 15 to 16. Who's counting? More than a decade for the incredible cemetery walk. Tell us a little something about this event, Kathy. Oh, it's fun. First of all, we have a beautiful cemetery in Winona. On the hill, fall leaves, we usually peak, pick the peak weekend, and history comes alive. And you just saw a taste of that with Grace Watkins, who Kathy will be playing some of the time. It's an incredible event with a lot of different volunteers and community members, some of them professional performers, many of them not just folks who want to come out and support their community historical society by... All sorts of things. We have actors, we have parking attendants, people who provide uh, snacks, people who are guides. But many of them play characters, correct? Many of them are characters. And this year, there's always a theme. This year's theme is... Kind of the picks of the past. We've okay. picked out some of our favorite scripts, redone them, uh, new, added new characters. And it's, it's a wonderful event. It brings uh, quite a lot of help for the historical society, but it also reaches out to the school groups that it's, come during exactly. the week, right? We have hundreds of kids that come, and for them, literally, history comes alive. Oh, it's so, so much fun. Now, what are the dates of this project? Do you oh, remember? Oh, goodness. It's the second week in October. 
and it runs, I believe, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday night right. at the at the History Center right. for those who might have a trouble with walking. Right. And then Saturday, Sunday, outdoors. Outdoors all cemetery. day during. Um, I think it starts afternoons at, uh, from twelve, 12 to three or four. I think four. the last tour ends. I think at three or. Well, it start the last tour starts, starts at, at three, three. Right. Or four. And it travels throughout the entire cemetery, so you. You also get a nice walk in we if the weather is great it's a uh, fun way to enjoy a crisp fall and day if the weather is bad if it's raining we do hold it at the history center so rain or shine this right. event does happen exactly. the dead do come alive That's exactly and then right. the wednesday thursday and friday they perform for the middle schoolers from all over the county and some right? private schools yeah. right homeschooled homeschooled uh, yeah. uh -huh. mm -hmm. so all in all it's well over a couple thousand people, right, that yeah, it's, it's attend this. 1,500, perhaps. Yeah, it's just great. Um, so please come out for the, um, is, what's the official title? It's I call it the Cemetery Walk. The Cemetery Walk. Is Voices from the Past. Voices though. from the Past, right? yes. Yeah. Thank okay. you. All right. Well, thank you for stopping by, and please tell Grace Watkins when you see her, thanks for uh, having her share we her story. We will communicate that All right. to Grace. Thank you. We'll be right back. The area's fastest internet just got faster. 200, 300, and gigabit internet is now available from HBC. With one gigabit, 1,000 megabit speed, there's nothing you can't do. Browse better, stream more, power every device, all at the same time. This is broadband designed to fit your home Wi-Fi needs. It's brand new speeds, and it's the fastest connection in town. Get internet from HBC, your local provider of the speed you need. Call 888-474-9995 to get started today. And we're back and it's October, so we have to have something a little bit strange or a little bit different for Halloween. So we have Cindy Noft, one of the co-founders of Auditorium, a new space that is going to pop up and sell all sorts of crafts and cool items that have a little bit of weird or creep going on in them. And then we have Dr. Bob Armstrong, one of Winona's treasures who's been around forever doing great puppet shows, but he's also um, a fabulous DJ. And they're gonna talk about an event that they're borrowing for a little bit and maybe <laughs> taking over in the future, our Halloweenona event. So go ahead, Cindy, tell us a little something about what's going on with Halloweenona. Okay, um, Halloweenona is a block party that'll take place on October 27th from 4 to 8 p.m. and we're... Do you, do you see how Cindy is just talking as though it's a very calm and straightforward event? Come on. <laughs> there you go. I gotta get excited. Yeah. Okay. We're having this awesome block party. There you go. <laughs> and it's gonna be on 3rd Street between Center and Lafayette. And we have the Ghostbuster guys coming down. We'll have a main stage with a mesmerist. And a costume whoa, contest. Whoa, a mesmerist? A mesmerist. For those of us who aren't a little, you know, knowledgeable of such things, what is a mesmerist? Well, as Bob has explained it to me, <laughs> it's a, a cross between a hypnotist and a magician. Ooh, okay. So he will be We performing. won't even remember we attended. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's the point. Yeah. That's what, the point. <laughs> what happens in Halloween stays in Halloween. Right, okay. exactly. Okay. And we will also be having con costume contests uh -huh. uh, for different age groups. Um, we'll also have a pet costume contest. Oh, so great. it'll be pretty fun to see how people dress their animals up for Halloween. And animals, not just dogs and cats, right? Right, you right. Any animal. Your oh. iguana, if you want right. to. Right, yeah. <laughs> no piranhas, but everything <laughs> short. Okay, and, and aren't you doing some sort of like attempts at some sort of spooky houses and taking some of the shops and in Third Street and give it a little bit of, ooh. Yes, yeah. yeah, we are gonna be working with the businesses to decorate the windows, uh -huh. but our main feature is going to be a haunted graveyard in the ooh. empty lot next to Blooming Grounds. Uh -huh. um, we're working on building all kinds of coffins and tombstones and it should be pretty exciting. And that's right up your alley, no pun intended, right. uh, <laughs> because the auditorium, tell us about that space. The auditorium is a pop-up um, store that we started this summer. And, and we as you and your brother me Brian. Me and my brother Brian uh -huh. Noft. Um, we sell jewelry, we also feature Bob's puppets and other artists' jewelry. Um, I'm a taxidermist. Uh -huh. So I like to work with bones and natural materials. 
Um, so I'll be adding more and more of that kind of oddity to the mm -hmm. collection. Mm -hmm. Um, it's sort of like the Ripley's Believe It or Not meets the shopping mall, right? Sort of, yeah, with <laughs> yeah. a little bit of sideshow. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Cool. And I can't think of a, a more interesting sort of way to talk about arts and culture in Winona than this story. And also because you and your brother moved away from Winona and said, you know, we do all sorts of really crazy things. Let's move back to Winona and add a little bit of the crazy to this town. Right? Yeah, we brought the crazy back. Yeah, um, they found me right away. Uh, yeah, immediately. <laughs> you got to get Bob. Pirate Bob, <laughs> Pirate Steve, I mean, and too. Right? Found him too. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah, we were living out in LA for about 15 years and decided to permanently relocate here back in May of 2017. Well, so We are so thrilled to have you guys. You know, the cool uh, quotient in Winona up just a little bit immediately when you guys hit town. So. Thank you. So <laughs> Now, Dr. Bob, tell us a little something about the puppet aspect. I know these are handcrafted. You make each one yourself. Yeah. Um, well, I'm really excited to have uh, another place to play. I've played all over Winona, just about every venue there is, and it's fun. You were just at Live at the Levee, right? I was just at Live yeah. at the Levee, and that was fantastic. And there's nothing like closing down 3rd Street for a fun Halloween party. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing Nosferatu, a shadow show, Ooh. Um, which I'm diligently working on now. And it's going to be incredible. And okay. it's, it's fun for all For ages. those that don't know, Nosferatu is the, is the actual name for the vampire Dr Dracula, yeah, I Dracula, believe, yeah. correctly. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's beautiful, it's a really old art form, and I'm hoping to really kind of spook people out a little bit with it. It's well, you should fun. speak to the Commonwealth folks, you know, they're doing a production of Dracula right now. Oh, are they? Maybe okay. you could do a little teaser there to bring people over to Winona. Yeah, for sure. They, it might be, they might yeah. love it in their lobby, so. And I know you're gonna there. come back after the commercial and do a little puppet show for us, a little taste. Just a little taste. And those <laughs> types of puppets are the puppets that are featured in the auditorium? Or are they smaller and less intricate? Or The puppet that he's going to be working with is one of the puppets that we sell at the auditorium. That's so. great. <laughs> and there'll probably be puppets worked into all sorts of areas of this Halloween, I would assume, right? Yes. We are inviting other puppeteers to join us. So we've got a couple other people that are going to be doing oh, some street great. puppetry. Which is great, because my plan is to get more puppets on the streets uh -huh. and in Winona. Uh -huh. yeah. That's too easy. I'm not going to even touch it. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels like there's a million jokes there. <laughs> but um, So what are the hours of this um, uh, extravaganza? It's 4 to 8, and uh -huh. it's free, and it's for the entire family. And it's not Halloween night, right? It's no, it's October 27th, that Saturday. Yeah, that's Saturday. So remember, if you want to get your you know, sort of scary time in and have the kids all dress up and come and participate in the costume, uh, competition. It's uh, Saturday the 27th from 4 to 8, Halloweenona, and we're going to take it from there and every year we're going to add just a few more things on it. So it's going to be a sort of annual um, spookathon for Winona. Ooh. And we'll be back in just a few minutes with Dr. Bob doing a little taste, an impromptu, because he didn't know for sure he was even going to do this, um, <laughs> puppet show for us. Par for the course. We'll be back. <laughs> So we're back with a very special guest. Captain Arg is Yarr, here. It's oh, Arg. Oh, I'm sorry. Captain Arg Yarr. is here to talk with us today on Artwork Winona. So Captain Arg, you're going to step off your boat and help out at Hala Winona? You betcha. I brought my whole hardy pirate crew and we're going to come down there and we're going to sail you sillies. Ah, well. Um, Tell us a little something about yourself. What seas do you uh, navigate? Well, I've sailed the seven seas and then some. Mm. Boy, but I tell you, being a pirate is not that fun. I'm starving. Look, I'm just getting bones. <laughs> Yeah, just bones, actually. Well, now, wait a minute. You said the seven seas and then some? I didn't know there were other seas. Oh, there's dark places. Places I have been you don't want to know about. Oh, okay. So well, young. I don't know. I think I could probably use a little bit of what you're doing with the skin and bones, but that's all right. Um, you look like you have a really good exercise regimen going. Yeah, I work out every day. Pump it, pump it, pump it. Woo! <laughs> Good. And um, are there going to be some friends uh, that are going to be at this celebration? Some of your crew? Yeah, we heard that it's going to be this dancing frog called Herman J. Frog. He's pretty good for an amphibian. Oh, okay. Yarr. Yarr. And, and who else? Any of the uh, other mates? Well, we got some more of the skeleton crew, it's true, and possibly Admiral Benbow, who's an ancient mariner. 
Uh, He's got a, quite a left hook. Oh. When I say hook, I mean an actual hook. Oh, I get it. Yes. Arr. Arr. Um, <laughs> so, do you do any singing and dancing of your own? I do a couple little tricks. Here's one of them. Oh, oh, are you still with us? I was just playing dead. Oh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I was worried we'd have to bring in some CPR. Arr, 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 arr. So, so tell me, um, uh, if you had to sing one sea shanty for the audience, what would it be? Well, it'd have to be, oh no, that one's illegal. Uh, it would have to be, yo ho ho, a pirate's life for me. All right, could you do that for us? When I go to shore and I get, oh, that's not, that's the illegal one. All right. Yo ho ho ho, a pirate life for me. Ba da 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 The rest is copyrighted, so I can't sing anymore. <laughs> well, you know it's been about. a great, yes, of course, it's been a great pleasure meeting you, Captain Arg. Yar, and nice we to look meet you forward too. to seeing you at Halloween with all the rest of your mates. Yar, looking forward to it. NASCAR racing is about a whole lot more than just cars going around a track. It's about people who drive, people who engineer, people who plan, people who know how to put it all together. Meet the people who make the cars go round every week on Raceline. Watch Raceline here every week. And we're back with Teresa Remick from the Page Theater, the managing director. And she's here to talk about an exciting show in the Page series. I am. Thanks so much for having me sure. today, Lee. Um, we're really thrilled on October 7th, we'll be presenting Manual Cinema in their show, The End of TV. Um, Manual Cinema is a performance collective um, known for what they call live cinema productions. So it's kind of a mix of theater, handmade shadow puppetry, overhead projections, live music, wow. a whole realm of things that you get to witness all on stage that comes together to create what they show as their their live movie that's uh -huh, happening before uh -huh. your eyes. And I understand this has a dementia friendly... Um, it does. Uh, the End of TV is really a beautiful story about two women. Uh, one is an elderly woman named Alice um, who once worked in a local auto plant that is now retired and beginning to show signs of dementia. Uh, she's befriended by another woman named Flo, who was laid off from the same auto plant many years later um, when she becomes her Meals on Wheels driver. So Flo and Alice develop a friendship as Alice starts to sink further into the realm of dementia. And it's a really beautiful story of support and neighborly friendship and community. Um, and, you know, Flo really finds some some positive direction for her life as a result of her interactions with Alice. So it's uplifting. It's an uplifting it story. It is. It's a hard story. It's a difficult story, mm -hmm. but the friendship is really a beautiful friendship. Um, and we'll have lots of support from our local community to talk about the event as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Winona's Dementia Friendly Community has been very involved with us in mm -hmm. planning a post-show discussion. Uh, we'll have representatives from that initiative, the Friendship Center, uh, Catholic Charities, as well as one of the actors in the show who portrays Alice. And this is what I love about Winona. We went from the crazy um, puppet Bob, and, and, uh -huh. <laughs> and then here we are talking about something really, really just important and heartfelt and great for our community to be diving into to think. So we're really, really grateful that the thank Page you. series is bringing such an important subject to us. Well, thanks. And we love when we can find performances and artists who are addressing issues that are so important to our local uh -huh. community as well. Um, this one in particular, we've known about this company for some time, but this show really felt like it was the right match for Winona. And the Page series, in case those that are watching don't know, goes from Pinocchio to um, this wonderful Latin group that came and That's just played right. beautiful music. Yeah. And then this really sort of heartfelt drama with a crazy amount of wonderful tech mm -hmm. technical um, care. Yeah, we so. do a, a great mix of music, theater, dance, performance, all sorts of things throughout the year. And they're all professional touring companies that we bring into Winona. Great. Well, thanks so much for stopping by, and that's Artwork Winona for October.